Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to another episode of The Projectionist Vlog. I'm Eve, I'm your host. Um, and this week is the big um, Marvel uh, movie coming out, the MCU, uh, The Avengers Endgame. It's, I guess, the final one uh, of that of the entire 22, 22 23 movies they had. Uh, you know, with Iron Man, Captain America, and Thor. Um, so, I just wanted to talk about running those movies when they were out. Um, they're very interesting because when those movies started coming out, the MCU, not not the X-Men and the Spider-Man and the uh, Fantastic Four, um, Elektra and Daredevil, I'm talking about the MCU. When the MCU movies started coming out, that was a, pretty much at the tail end of like you know mass distribution of film. Uh, and it all started with Iron Man and The Incredible Hulk in the summer of 2008. And... Um, the last movie was uh, on a mass level to be distributed on film was Iron Man 2. Um, and then everything else I've experienced was digital, but I think only a handful of theaters were able to run like film prints of the MCU movies. So, yeah, the first movie I ran on 35mm film of the MCU was Iron Man. came out May 2nd, 2008. I remember seeing the very first teaser trailer for it on a print of Resident Evil Extinction, which came out the September prior, um, and it had the uh, the teaser trailer uh, with the, the song from Demon Knight, I think it was Filter, uh, Hey Man, Nice Shot, that was the name of the song. Uh, it was a great trailer, it was awesome, the movie looks great, uh, and then uh, later on in the coming months, I think March, February, we had another trailer. Uh, then the movie came out. Um, so at this time, I was still working at the Sixplex, and I was doing the IMAX at the uh, 18plex, the Regal Cinemas in Rochelle. Um, the Sixplex that I worked at, even though it was the same company, um, we actually did not get Iron Man 1. We ended up getting a movie called Maid of Honor with uh, Patrick Dempsey, if you remember that. So uh, the Sixplex was not busy at all f for, for that weekend. Um, and for some reason, Iron Man went over to the competing movie theater at the other end of the parking lot, Clearview Cinemas. They got it for some reason. Uh, we should have gotten it as Paramount Pictures, but I, I don't know, like whatever they worked out. Um, but uh, we didn't get the movie. Um, I didn't build the print for Iron Man. I, I, I don't think so, no. Um, and then I worked Friday night at the Sixplex. It was really dead. And then on Saturday, May 3rd, um, I was scheduled, um, I'm trying to remember if the movie came out May 2nd or May 3rd, but the Saturday after it came out, um, I was scheduled very early in the morning to run this movie in the IMAX auditorium. Now, this wasn't an IMAX screening. This was just, as I've said before, you know, Regal trying to maximize the amount of profits uh, just like many other, like, you know, large, you know, uh, multiplexes that had an IMAX theater, but they weren't showing an IMAX movie at the time, so they would show a regular 35mm screening in that theater, and it would look terrible, the image would be, like, all stretched out and out of focus, and you can see the aperture and the scratches on the side and all that, um, so I had an easy gig, um, I just had to get up really early, <laughs> uh, I left work, uh, really late, I went home, and uh, I fell asleep, and I had to be in at like, I think 9.30, 10 o'clock or something like that, really early. I woke up uh, at like 12 in the afternoon, 12.30. I was really scared. I was like, holy shit, you know? Um, I call a cab, I text my boss, I don't know what happened, um... And I made it to the 18plex, and I run upstairs, and I see my boss in the IMAX, Damien. And he was on the phone, and he just was like, sit down. He gets off the phone, and he's like, dude, uh, he's like, what happened to you, man? Do you know that a new district manager was walking around in the building today? You know, Frank, the general manager, Frank wants you gone. He wants you out of here. <laughs> uh, luckily, Frank did not get rid of me. Uh, He's a nice guy. I miss him. Uh, he, he, he yelled at me, you know, kind of kind of uh, talked to me about it. But, 
No, he just, he was like, don't ever do that again, you know? Uh, I was really late. The first show ran very late, and one of the union guys had to uh, come upstairs, and it was easy. They just had to turn the sound rack on and thread up the 35 millimeter because we weren't running IMAX. So, easy peasy. And I explained to my boss, I worked really late at the sixplex. He's like, you know, dude, you should have just stayed up. You knew that if you came in, you could have started the, you could have thread up the movie, started the film, and just take a nap. And that was that. You know? That's all you had to do. And I felt really bad, like, that whole week it was out. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, so that's my experience of running it, the movie. And I remember walking into the IMAX auditorium, walking up the the stairs to the side door and it was a scene when Tony Stark's about to get his uh, take out his old heart and uh, Gwyneth Paltrow puts in the new one um, but yeah that was a very busy movie um, and I obviously survived the summer I end up, ended up running Dark Knight uh, which was busier than Iron Man that summer but uh, yeah uh, now fast forward to uh was it like uh, four or five weeks later, The Incredible Hulk came out, um, and my sixplex did get that. We did get that movie, and I did build that print up, and it was about six, seven reels, I think, or six reels, I don't remember, um, and that was the, the Edward Norton one, and we ran that, and it wasn't as busy as Iron Man, but it had a little bit of an audience. I think we just had one print of it, maybe two, I don't remember, I think it was one, um, but we ran that, and... Uh, that did pretty well for about a couple weeks, um, and that was pretty much it. But you can see the connection with the two movies. Um, you know, at the end credit scene of Avengers, I mean, of Iron Man, Nick Fury walks in and he talks about the Avenger Initiative, and um, then in Incredible Hulk, Robert Downey Jr. walks into the bar to talk to William Hurt, uh, William Hurt's character, General Ross, I think it was. Um, but you can see that they started something. Um, so this was like very early uh, MCU. In 2009, there was no MCU movie that came out. And in 2010 was Iron Man 2. Now, I'm going to talk about that in a uh, separate episode. This this episode, I'm going to cut into two. This is part one of it. I'm going to talk about you know just the MCU movies as a whole. And the second part, I'll talk about Iron Man 2 because there was a little bit of a uniqueness to that, to that, uh, sequel. Um, but yeah, that was the last one I ran on film. Now, um, I have here, uh, I've kept a 35 millimeter trailer for Iron Man. Let's see, scope, trailer two, Paramount Pictures, turn it around, for programming on selected PG-13 and all R-rated films. Very good trailer. Um, now, what's cool about these trailers is that, uh, if you notice, they're all different studios. That's Incredible Hulk from 2008. They're all different studios. Um, and Disney bought Marvel, I think all of Marvel, in 2009. But Paramount Pictures... Were, they were still distributing and, and I think making these movies too. That's Iron Man 2. I'll go back to that one real quick. Uh, Thor. Right here. Now, these over here, real quick, um, this is when everything was filmed. Now, 2011 or 2010, we went digital on the 35 side, and then in 2011, we went digital on the IMAX side. Um, so I built up digital prints for Thor, Captain America, and Avengers. Uh, and then everything else, uh, Iron Man 3, um, Thor Dark World, Captain America 2, and Guardians of the Galaxy. And that was it for me. Uh, I took a bit of a hiatus. But um, I was able to acquire 35mm trailers for MCU movies that were post-digital. And there's Thor right there, Scope. And as you can see, Paramount Pictures. And it tells you uh, what are rated movie. I mean, what movies you should put on with the with the, that are appropriate for the rating. But it's great to see that uh, this is all Paramount. Um, you go, Captain America, First Avenger. These were never used, by the way. Um, these ones 
They were all shot on film. I think Captain America was the first one shot digital. Uh, you can kind of see it too. It's very harsh on the eyes. Now this trailer is very interesting. Um, <laughs> this is Avengers right here. And check that out. I don't know if you can see it. But uh, it's very noticeable. Mickey Mouse. And it says Walt Disney on it. And uh, trailer number two. And I like the little red telling you what features to put it on according to the rating. Um, but yeah, that's pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, I like, I like how they made uh, Disney very prominent on here. That's pretty cool. Um, so this still had Paramount Pictures, uh, I think, attached to it. I think up until Iron Man 3, you see the Paramount logo. But, um, but everything else after that is just Marvel Studios. So... But yeah, you know, um, MCU came along right when film was on its way out. Um, so I only got to run three of them. So guys, I'm going to move on to uh, part two of this episode. Uh, anybody who does not want to proceed, uh, thank you very much for watching. Okay. Like, click subscribe, comment in the comment section below, and please share. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll see you guys next episode. I mean, next part of the episode. Bye.